time. Amen. It is such an honor and a privilege and a blessing to be here today with all of you to share the word of the Lord and the message he has given me to bring. May God bless you all and to him be all the glory. So, since I first heard news of this day that I could be preaching, the Lord immediately began to put a message upon my heart and to speak to me and to show me and to reveal to me in the verses and occasions concerning that message. A lot of what he has been downloading to me was already very familiar to me and just being brought back to my remembrance. It was the message of where the Lord first began to deal with me and where he first begins to deal with all of us and is always continually dealing with us. That message, our message today, church, is on the heart. Amen? So, why this message and why so important? Well, for one, because out of the abundance of it, Matthew 12 and verse 34 says that the mouth speaks. Amen? So the condition of our heart is revealed by our words. What we say can produce either negative results or positive results, good or bad. If our hearts are right, out comes blessings and life. Amen? But if our hearts are not right, we can speak things, painful things, that leave lasting, painful impressions. Does anyone here know what I mean when I say that our words can have lasting, painful impressions? Amen. Don't raise your hands, but has anyone here ever experienced that? I know I have. And it is no fun. So it's very really important this message in the heart. And what's uh, the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaks. And two, also, for everything that we do flows out of it. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4 and 23 says. Another version says, for out of it are the issues of life. What are the issues of life? The issues of life are common problems, issues, cries that happen to normal people living normal lives every day, managing our relationships so that they are healthy and functional. Right? Amen? I mean, that's that struggle every day. When Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? Comes to kill, steal, and destroy our families. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the families are the foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. Of our whole, um, our whole being. And also surviving disabilities, coping with grief, loss, and self-esteem issues. So this is a broad, very broad set of topics to be sure. So, this is why the issues of the heart is so important. Everything we do flows out of it. We all the issues of life. And today we are, so, we are surrounded by so many of these issues, right? Just attacking us constantly. And thirdly, why the issue of the heart is so important, why this message today is because, church, it's what God looks at. Amen? 1 Samuel, chapter 16 and verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Not only does the Lord look at the heart, the Lord is always at work in them. Amen? He does 
not look at what is seen, and neither should we. But he looks at what is unseen. But what is seen is only temporal, church. But what is seen is eternal. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 18. And, you know, God, I really have to laugh about that one because God cares so much about every aspect of our lives, down to the very last detail on every level. And when I say that, I have to laugh because God spoke this verse to me once regarding the simplest of things as just getting my hair highlighted. Many, many years ago, for the first time, I was just thinking about it, right? So I asked the Lord. I asked him about it, and that was the verse he gave me. Okay? That was the verse he spoke to me, and how true it is. Now, I'm not saying that getting your hair done is wrong, but how many know those highlights don't last for long? <laughs> and once you start, we have to continue with it. So, you see, the Lord said, it was okay, but I'm just telling you now, you know. Those things don't last. They're not very really important. If you want to, go ahead. But if it's only temporary, <laughs> you will have to keep doing it over and over. But really, I'm more concerned about what's, on, what's in your heart, what's on the inside, how you feel, what's going on in there. Are you happy? You know, are you healthy? How are your relationships with other people? You know, are they positive? Are they strong? Are they encouraging? Are they uplifting? Do they bring life? Amen? So, God is about the unseen. Amen? And because this is, these are just, these are the only things that we take with us and carry them with us into the next life. Into eternity. With Him. Forever. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, God is very concerned about this message in the heart. And those are the reasons why. And I say, how does God work in our hearts? How does God work in our hearts? Well, I just explained to you about the story with my hair. It was with the Word. And then God works in our heart the way the Word. It was the Word of God that He spoke to me. <laughs> God works in our heart in the word. Hebrews 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes and intents of the heart. Amen? For with the word, God uses to um, judge our thoughts and hearts and our motives, amen? And John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, amen? Hallelujah. So that Word is Jesus, amen? Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Bible, because this is the Word of God. When we put this Word into our heart, amen, we're putting Jesus into our heart, amen, hallelujah. And that is how God works in our hearts, amen, through the Word. And Jesus, amen, hallelujah, glory, glory to God, glory to God. So those are some reasons why we are talking about this message today. God has given me why it is so important. This message has a heart. For I didn't close everything. We, we've been talking about in our Bible studies, amen, about bitterness and resentment and offenses, amen. We could talk about all those things, but all that flows from the heart. It's a heart issue we have here. So, what? 
we're going to discuss our moment text here now, just looking at some unhealthy heart conditions for a moment. And first one is Jeremiah 17 and 9. And it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I tried the rain, even to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. Hallelujah. Second, John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You see, you're a troubled heart condition. Amen. And we're going to go with also verse Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is close to the broken heart. And also Mark 7, verse 20, he went on. What comes out of the person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, free, malice, deceit, goodness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Oh my goodness, what a list, right? All these things come from inside and defile the person. So, some of the unhealthy heart conditions that we see here that are in need of some serious spiritual heart surgery, church, are one, a deceitful heart, two, a troubled heart, three, a broken heart, or a heart full of all kinds of ungodly. And these are just some of the things. I mean, this issue with the heart, this topic of heart, this doesn't seem the heart is so deep, so wide, so long, so fast, so wide. I mean, it, this is why it's a continuous work in us, always, until the end. The Lord is constantly, always perfecting us, and will continue to do so. And it's so much. And, to, and this is just the, the tip of the iceberg that we're talking about here. So, what I want to touch on here today is a verse of Jeremiah 17, 9. What is a deceitful heart above all things? So, we're going to get deceitful heart where it concerns our relationships and our motives. Sometimes our hearts can be deceived in the areas of love and romance above all things. Amen? And this area is so serious, we get confused between lust and love so easily. Mark chapter 7 stated it from adultery and sexual immorality. And what is sexual immorality? Simply sex outside of marriage. Amen? Marriage, biblical definition of marriage, is a covenant between one man and one woman before God. When you're married, it's exclusive. It's holy. It's pure. This is when we're married, you know? Before marriage, it means abstinence, being pure and holy, and being true to yourself. Okay, now this is a big one. That's why it says above all, because we can get so caught up. When we get into this, the, the devil uses these areas to deceive us. We think we're in love. Well, if we're in love with somebody, we need to wait on the Lord, okay, first. But we tend to want to rush things. We don't wait. We don't listen. We need to wait on the Lord. If it's from the Lord, then God will bring this desire to pass. Amen? So we need to wait on it. But when we try to do things in our own strength, in our own way, in our own power, in our own mind, in our own hands, and don't follow and listen to his leading and guiding concerning this area, this particular topic, this could lead us to um, so much trouble. 
and it leads to the other things we saw about the conditions of the heart. Brokenness, a troubled heart, a broken heart, amen? And all the other list of things that we see listed in Mark chapter 7. So, God is really concerned about our heart. And when we're single, He wants us to be true to ourselves first and true to Him. He wants us to be in love with Him, like that true white woman in Song of Solomon. Just to love Him and how lovely He thinks you are. And how beautiful He thinks you are. And ladies, He is your husband. Men, He's like your wife. Just cares for you so much for your everything. So if we could wait on him, let him do the choosing, let him be the arranger. Let him hear arranged marriages. Well, let him be the arranger of your marriage. Amen. <laughs> and hallelujah. And he will bring forth good things to happen. Hallelujah. So and then the consequences of those sins, when we get outside of God's boundaries of marriage and, and getting caught up in these sexual sins, amen? And what happens is God sets up these boundaries for us, right? When we get outside of them, and we're, we end up broken and hurt and crushed, amen? And the enemy loves that, amen? Because God has a plan and a purpose for us, right? And the enemy does not like to see that plan and that purpose from the past, right? So he's going to do everything he can, and he uses that area of romance so much because it seems to be like a very weak area in most people's lives, you know? Satan knows our weaknesses, and he'll use them Whenever he can, right? It was a word said. We stand strong in the word, but we let God use that word and work that word in us. The word says in our weaknesses, his strength is made perfect. Amen. And when we are weak, he is strong. Amen. So we depend on him and rely on him. Amen. Leaning not on our own understanding, but acknowledging Him in all our ways, and He will guide and direct all our paths. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's always laid it on my heart to work very early on on that subject. Amen. As the verse, very first verse, the Lord ever put into my heart, Jeremiah 17 and verse nine, many many years ago. He first came here for this very church. And I had just come from coming out of uh, like my second divorce. I was pretty tore up. I was heartbroken. It was devastating. I was hurting really bad. And everyone just kept telling me, oh, it's okay. It wasn't your fault. You're a good person. You know, you can do anything. And I just kept crying and crying and continually crying. Nothing anybody said would help me at this point. I was broken. And when I came here, and I heard that verse, it was like a shot of air right through my heart. It was like I got it, and the light bulb went on. And I thought, okay, it wasn't all their fault, those relationships that were broken and messed up. I had my part in it too, right? Amen. But the heart is so deceitful, and the enemy is so deceptive, and such a liar, you know. They try to make me think, like, there's nothing wrong with you. But, you know, that was an awesome verse, and it struck me, and it opened my eyes to the way I was living, and my thoughts, amen, and what, you know, um, how I got into these situations, and my part, and the role I play as well in those relationships not working out. And, um, Hallelujah. And at that time, everybody wanted me to go and be on medication and everything. And just thought, you know, I, I needed that. And I did try it, you know, and for uh, a moment. <laughs> but 
but it just didn't feel right with me at that time, okay? So then I found here and what it was. And I praise God that for me, he healed me with his word. Amen. And then I had to go through that season of um, dying to myself there and realizing my true condition in the sight of God. And when I came to that place of realization, that's what happened, you know. So I had to go through that brokenness and heartache. And I praise God for it. And I thank you for that. Amen. So this area, I see how he used this over and over again. Since then, <laughs> I see it time and time again with, you know, others around me. And, but they haven't found the Lord yet. So they do continue to make the same mistake over and over. And I feel so bad for that because I say they just don't realize that they go on in that next relationship or try to find a new relationship. Unless they worked out all those problems and issues from that previous relationships, they're going to take all that with them and carry them with them right into the next. Amen. And what happens? Same cycle over and over and over again. Amen? Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. So those are some situations of what an unhealthy heart looks like. Amen? But I want to go on to say what we can do to get a healthy heart now. Amen? A healthy heart that doesn't have to be sad and hurt and depressed and defeated and failure after failure after failure. <coughs> and Ezekiel 36 and 20, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he, here we can have a new heart. Amen. And a new spirit the Lord offers us. Amen. And I want to say that even though one of the unhealthy heart conditions of a broken heart which the enemy, Satan, used for evil, for bad, for harm, and to hurt us. Hallelujah. That our God can turn that around and use that for the good. Amen. As he says in Psalms 34 and verse 15, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are of a crushed spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord about Pastor Nancy, I just want to say to you the other week when you gave us that testimony about Israel and your hopes and your expectations and how you shared your heart was and, and how you felt about all that and you that you were broken, you were just broken. This is the Lord saying, Yeah, but he was so close to you that he was so close to her that at that very moment and that brokenness and that sadness and that time of her, he was there with her. He saved her. Glory to God. So these are ways to a healthy heart. If the enemy meant for harm or evil and that brokenness, God turn it around and use for the good. Because when we are broken in that place of brokenness, when we get out of that place of trying to do things all on our own, right? Our own strength, our own power, our own might, what do we get? In that situation, we get the three Fs. You ever hear of the three Fs? Well, one of them is, first of all, we end up frustrated trying to do it all in our own strength, right? We get frustrated. And then what happens from all that frustration, from being frustrated? You know that that frustration will really wear you out, right? So with that weariness comes fatigue. <laughs> now we're fatigued here. We're trying to do all this in our own strength, in our own power, in our own mind. And then finally at the end of it, the third half we end up with is failure. Amen? Hallelujah. So those are the three Fs. And then, but in that case, 
come that are broken as we are broken. Finally done with trying to do it in our own strength. We have no more answers, right? We can't do it anymore because his thoughts are higher than his thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. Hallelujah for that brokenness. That's when he comes in there to care for us and to comfort him. That's when we cry out to him. We cry out to him at that time. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. I need you. Amen. Amen. So in our rock to a healthy heart, um, heart surgery, I mean, we need to believe. That's Romans 10. In verse 9 and 10 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, Woo! and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Woo! Yeah. Or just with your heart, amen, with your heart that amen. you believe. Amen. With our heart that we believe and are justified. It's with our mouth, amen. But in abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. And you profess your faith and are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So our ways to a healthy heart. For God to give us this new heart in us. Sometimes it's that road from brokenness. Amen. To believing, crying out to God and believing. Amen. And as we do that, as we cry out to him, and we make it one of our prayers, Psalm 51 to 10, create in me a pure heart, O Lord God. A pure heart, O oh God, and you a steadfast spirit within me, right? After we are saved, amen. Some of the stuff is from before we are saved. Some of it's from after we are saved. We have to still cry out to Him all the time because the Spirit is willing, church, but the flesh is weak, right? <laughs> amen. So we still come up against that. So we, stuff still tries to creep in every day, whatever we see, whatever we hear, suddenly, deceptively, tries to creep in. So we need to cry out to God. Create in me a pure heart of God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And also Psalm 139, 23 and 24, I love this verse. Search me. Oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts, oh God, and see if there be any wicked, hurtful, offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. <laughs> Ooh, these are some cures to a healthy heart. These are some ways that does his heart so in us. Amen? Through the brokenness, crying out to him, believing, praying, praying always. Amen, the word says. Praying always. Be worried and anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make a request. Be known to God and the God of peace that passes all understanding. Talk down to your heart and mind. Through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And lastly, church, as far as a way to get to a healthy heart, the word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 14 and 5. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves to see whether you are going to fail. Test yourselves. Amen. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fall and fail the test. Do you not know, church? Does it not know that when we spend our time examining ourselves, we don't have any time to look at judge or examine what anyone else is doing. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Examining ourselves, the Lord said, because there is plenty, plenty, plenty to be examined. Amen? Hallelujah. We don't have to look that far. We don't have to look 
outside, everywhere around us, and everybody else. The word said, look straight. Do not look to the left or to the right. Amen? Hallelujah. Straight ahead and put ourselves and up with God. That's plenty enough. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, I just have to say for the you. Maybe you're someone here today who's hard to struggle. I don't know. There's a lot of trouble, troubles out there. We just having a lot of troubled hearts as well. But if you're here today and you're someone that's broken right now and you're going through something, and you're just at the end of it, you're at the end of the road. You are at the end of the road. You're really broken right now. But nobody knows. But you know, God knows. Or there's someone here today you've been deceived. Amen. You've been deceived. Is the word said? Is the word is we see anymore? That our hearts can be very easily deceived. Amen. Or maybe we're here today and our heart may be filled with one of those things from that long list in Mark chapter 7. I don't know, evil thoughts, sexual immorality, you know, adultery. But we got greed in our heart. Or money has become an idol in our life before God. Or slandering others. All those things, pride, arrogance. We got that in our heart today. So I say, don't wait, church. Don't wait. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Is there any prayer requests or any needs? Don't hesitate. Please come forward. And we want to pray for you. We welcome you to come. Pastor Mark, Pastor Nancy, to come up. Pastor Lucy, would you like to come up and pray with us today, too? Anyone, if you need prayer, this altar is open. And then we will lay this down. Let's make it right to 